Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you a friend of mine. This is Anthony Martinez, a.k.a. DJ Bean. What's up? What's up? What's up? My name is DJ Bean, and I am a beatboxer. This just got serious. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get three words from you? Three words. Joy. Onomatopoeia. And pa I heard peaches, and I heard something I heard passion. Is that what I know? Okay, fair enough. Passion, peaches, joy, onomatopoeia. Let's right, go. Let's do it. Yep. <laughs> If you are a hater, I don't want to see ya I'll be spitting all my rhymes with that on the ya You know I call what? I kick you with Freud Oh yeah, you know, cause I'm about spreading joy I'ma do it my thing, I'ma do it till I ring You know your boy behold Nick got two pieces of bling That's enough in what I say Cause your boy be holding it down with the swagger of the sway It's alright cause I'm gonna do my thing for minutes Everybody wanna see me but they know I ain't finished It's alright because I'm holding down with mashing You know me cause I'm spitting with the passion I see you from the back, I like your needs is it's all good cause I'm staring at your peaches I like it fresh like the girl said earlier I'm gonna do it cause I'm not a squirrelier Walking around, I'll be hibernating But now I've done the rhyme, that's what I'm creating Cause I'm up here on the red like a sniper I'm up here, I'm the rapping pie piper Oh yeah, you wanna try to compete with me But you can't even can do it cause I'm with DJP We hold it down, gonna do it here for y'all And I just spit a verse and you're welcome oh. DJ Bean, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever been walking and then you tripped and then you went for a little jog? Like, hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, okay. No, I meant to run. I meant to run. I meant to run. It's like, let me get my fitness on real quick. This is something that has happened to us all on a daily basis. Maybe walking into this room it happened to you. So when I freestyle, I am constantly tripping. Constantly tripping because I'm like, when I start, I'm like, okay, thank you for those words. I can do a couple of couplets with those words. I can spit a few bars on them. That's awesome. And so I go in, I'm feeling really good. And I'm like, oh my God, what rhymes with purple? <laughs> and then I trip. I don't know what's happening, so I scramble to make up a word. I'm like, da -da -da um, <clears throat> you know, I think I rhymed meaches with peaches earlier. I don't know what meaches is, <laughs> but I had to run and catch up, and then I had to get back into my swagger. I had to get back into my stride. That's what we're talking about today. We all have a fear of tripping. We all have a fear of tripping, and therefore we allow that fear to not let us start. Because we think that once we start, we're going to trip and we're going to fall on our face. But just like when you're walking around town and you trip, you catch yourself and you keep it moving. But we let that fear paralyze us. We let that fear paralyze us. And the reason why is because of the stories we tell ourselves. It's because of the stories that we convolute in our brain and therefore we're like, I can't do that. I can't be this. I'm not. They don't look like me. I can't do what they do. I can't. We talk ourselves out of ever even trying something. For example, <clears throat> I was a young strapping 11-year-old at one point. I know you can picture it. So I was 11 years old, and this woman named Kristen, and by woman, I mean a fellow 11-year-old, but at that age, she was still a woman. She was classy. <clears throat> <clears throat> Turns out Kristen lived six houses away from me, but I didn't know that because we went to separate elementary schools, but now we're in middle school, and Kristen's on my bus. And I'm like, hold up. Where have you been, fairest maiden of them all? So I found out where she lived, and I, I started to take the long way home whenever I'd ride my bike back from my friend's places. I started to take the long way home, and I'd ride my bike past her house just hoping that she'd be outside because if she was outside, you know, surely I would just stop and talk to her, right? No. Oh. I would immediately stand up on my bike and pedal 40 times faster than I was going before 
Because I knew in my head that if I went to school the next day and went on the bus, that Kristen would see me and be like, hey, saw on your bike yesterday. Why don't you sit next to me? <laughs> Maybe later we'll go ride the teeter-totter together, huh? Let me tell you what didn't happen. That. I still use this. This was still my technique as I grew older, too. I would go to a bar in my mid-20s, and I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I am intrigued by that individual over there. I could go and talk to them. But I better sing this karaoke song instead. You know what I mean? I'd be like, with or without you, with or without you. Because I knew right after I finished that song, waiting for me on the side of the stage with a ginger ale in hand would be that woman. <clears throat> Let me tell you what didn't happen. <laughs> so in both of these instances, I failed because of the story that I told myself. Because I was like, no, I wouldn't stop and talk to her. That wouldn't work, right? Let me do this other thing. The stories that I told myself prevented me from ever achieving my goal, or even trying out to see if I could complete my goal. So as you heard, I dabble in a little bit of, uh, a little bit of rapping. <clears throat> that actually started back in around 2005. It was in my second senior year in college. I took a victory lap. No shame in the victory lap. <clears throat> so I took a victory lap. <clears throat> took a victory lap in college, and there were these two guys that lived across the hall from me. It was Roddy J and Fernando, two super good friends of mine. And every once in a while, Ferdy and Roddy would hold a cipher. Now, a cipher, for those who don't know, quick hip-hop history. Back in the early 1970s, this guy, DJ Cool Hurt, essentially is the father of modern-day hip-hop. He brought this idea of DJ battling to the Bronx, and then that spawned hip-hop. And out of DJ, and from DJing uh, came MCing, the true masters of ceremonies, the hype men, the hype women. <clears throat> and then from there, the MCs started to take more and more shine, and they started doing rapping and more freestyling and stuff like that. And so... In, in order to get better, these groups of, of individuals, of freestylers, would stand in a corner in the Bronx, and they would start spitting back and forth at each other on different topics. That's what a cipher is. <clears throat> so we would have these, he would have these ciphers in their room, and I would, always go, I would always go over there and listen, and I'd be like, oh, wow, I want to be able to do that. That'd be really cool, but like, I don't, I don't look like you. Am I allowed to rap? Am I, I don't, I, is that insulting if I try to, like, I don't know, like, my white guilt was just, like, spewing... <laughs> Can I, do, I don't know if I'm even allowed. <clears throat> so, so I would leave the room not having dropped any verses, <clears throat> and then I would go across to my room, close the door, put, a head, put some headphones on, and put an instrumental on, and I would start rapping to myself just to start playing around. Can I even do this? And I would start doing that. <clears throat> and my love of freestyle rapping started in that moment. And that's also around the time where my love of improv comedy started. And I saw this group a couple years later. A couple years later. I saw this group, check, baby, check, baby, one, check, baby, check, baby, two. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so I saw this group. Is this one on either? We're doing all right. We're having some fun. Here we go. This is better, though? How we doing? How we doing? Is this one better? It's a little, it's a little not there. Okay. <clears throat> so. So I saw this. Uh, so I saw this improv team uh, back in 2007. They're called the Beatbox, and they incorporate freestyle rapping into improv comedy. And I was like, "What? Is that a thing? Like, is that something that I could have? Is it something I could?" I said, oh wow, that'd be amazing. Can I do that? Am I allowed to do that? But seeing the individuals who looked like me do it, I was like, maybe I can do that. So I moved to New York City a couple years later, and I started this team called North Coast. Started this team called North Coast, and we incorporate freestyle rapping and beatboxing into long-form improv. And we respect hip-hop, and we respect improv, so we do them both at the highest caliber that we know how. But boy, were we terrible in the beginning. <laughs> Some straight garbage work. <laughs> but we kept going, and we kept getting better. There's six years ago. And then this past year, we won a top 10 comedy act in New York City, voted by Time Out New York. <clears throat> Super proud of the accomplishments that we have done. But all along this process, I tripped. But I started, right? I went back to my room. I went back to my room. I was like, let me see if I can try this. And let me trip through it. And then I saw other people, and I was like, let me see if I can find other people that want to do this. So let me start 
just seeing if other people want to do this. And then we tried it, and then we got in front of people. We're like, can we do this and not embarrass ourselves? And so we tried it, and we tripped a whole hell of a lot. But when we trip, we keep running, and then we get back to a comfortable walk. And that's what North Coast did to get to the point where we are today. We've all had these moments. We've all been through these situations. So, for example, for me, I worked with a lot of student leaders on a lot of different college campuses and worked in higher education for a while. And I would always go to conferences and present at different conferences and stuff like that. And I did it for about seven years. For about seven years, like, yeah, I got an idea. I'll submit a presentation. But I never thought that I was worthy of being compensated because I'm not good enough. I don't have, okay, I don't have what it takes. Even after four years in, some guy came up to me. He's like, hey, how much do you, ta- how much do you cost? I'm like, me? Nothing. I don't, I'm not worthy of anything. It took me three years after that to finally see if anybody would be interested in because I never thought that my story was good enough. So I'd allowed that to make me never start. We all have that. We all have to realize that our story is good enough. We must just start. We must start trying, right? Let me ask you a question. When is the, when is the last time this handle works better? <laughs> That's fair. It's a biased microphone. <laughs> Righties win again. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> let me ask you. When was the last time you did something that you didn't know you could? Was it in the monkey bars in elementary school? Was it when you decided to start a business? Was it when you applied to college, got into that college, attended that college, and graduated from that college when the world told you that someone who looks like you, who comes from where you come from, won't do any of those things? Was it when you saw that cute person across the bar and you said, I want to ask that person to be my partner? When was the last time you tried something new? Are you due to try something? Are you due to actually put yourself out there? Are you due to start? Probably. I think we're all due to start. The time is now to start. But we never start because we're scared. We're very scared. And the reason we do things the way we always have is because it's safe, not because it's right. The reason we do things the way we always have is because it's safe not because it's right. We all know what safety looks like. Safety for me, safety looks like, and you give yourself away, and you give, and you give, right? You two karaoke is what safety looks like for me. I recognize some of you are like, that is not safe for me. (laughs) It's not my safety. My safety is ice cream on a couch. (laughs) We all know what safety looks like because it's what compromises most of our lives. But we don't want to be that person who graduates from college and takes the first job they can get because they need a little bit of money and they need some health insurance. And then at the age of 48, their head pops off the pillow and they're like, where is my life? This is not at all what I thought it would be. What is happening? What got me here? Let me buy a Porsche. (laughs) We are never too old to start to try to put ourselves out there, but we must get over the fear of tripping. A guy named Ben Howard, <clears throat> singer-songwriter out of the UK, said, I've been worrying that we've all been living our lives in the confines of fear. Have you been living your life in the confines of fear? It's time to start. Because when we walk and we trip, we catch ourselves and we keep it moving. And that's what will happen when you start. Thank you. 